The biggest mistake I see sellers making when setting up their listing is they're not asking themselves certain questions that would help them create a better listing. For example, one thing you should do is write down what are all the questions that my customer might have when looking at this listing. So for example, let's say you're selling a uh, baby floor mat, uh, which I recently bought. And your customer, what is your customer thinking about, right? So your customer is going to think about what is the size of the product? Is it going to fit in my uh, living room or playroom or, or wherever I'm going to put the product? You want to make sure that you have the size of the product early in the listing so that it shows up on mobile. So looking at your listing from both mobile and desktop uh, view. Uh, and you also want to make a, a list of all the problems that your product solves and make sure that you stress that in the uh, listing. Make sure you read all your competitors' negative reviews and address the uh, negative uh, issues people may have with a competitor product that perhaps you have solved. Uh, and then of course, you'll wanna do the uh, SEO work to make sure that you have the keywords in the uh, title, the bullets, uh, the backend search terms and take full advantage of all the real estate that you have available between the um, copy, the main images, as well as A plus content. The most important thing you wanna have in your listing is a really, really great main image. Customers are scrolling through many different images, many different products. You wanna make sure you're able to capture their attention and you need to have a great main image in order to be able to capture their attention. Make sure it takes up uh, as much of the space as possible um, so that it doesn't look small compared to your uh, competitors. Uh, of course, you'll need a great title with, with the keywords there, but the really the most important thing you need in your listing is a great main image. Um, and then of course you need those secondary images, A plus content uh, and title. But um, if you don't have a, a great main image, you're not going to get uh, any clicks into your listing. When launching a product on Amazon, you want to try to figure out what kind of budget you're going to need for that product. So what are the things that you want to keep in mind? Well, the first thing is you're going to need money for your initial inventory. Uh, generally, I recommend getting 500 units, 1,000 units of, of a product, depending on your production time, are you shipping it by air or by sea and where you're producing it, but 500 to 1,000 units or, or perhaps more if you have a lot of confidence in, in the product. So you wanna have a budget set aside for that. You also wanna have budget uh, marketing, right? So. Uh, photography, graphic design work, developing your A-plus content, building out your storefront. Um, all those things need a budget and you don't want to spend all this money on inventory and then not have anything left to really make sure your product shines and looks great and you're giving it the best chance possible to generate those sales. You also want to think about when might I have to place a reorder for the product? So let's say you've sold through 300 units, 400 units, or even 200 units. At that point, you might need to reorder the product to make sure you don't run out of stock. So again, you're gonna to need to budget for that because the money that you've gotten in yet has not fully paid for uh, all the inventory that you're going to sell. You need to budget money for your uh, Amazon advertising. Initially, you, know, you can assume that most of your sales are gonna come from Amazon advertising and you need to allocate a budget towards that. The way I like to think about it is kind of working backwards and say, where would I like to have my sales be at the end of month one? So if I want to generate $10,000 in sales, and I'm assuming that the majority of my sales in, in the first month are going to come from uh, advertising, then I need to think about what is my conversion rate going to be? What average cost per click might I pay? And how many sales do I want to drive? And I'm going to work backwards towards the numbers of how much money I would need. I would generally say, you know, any product you're going to launch, you're going to want to start with $50 to $100 a day in terms of getting that product uh, going. But again, if you have uh, sales goals of selling $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 a month of a product, you're going to need to be more aggressive as a lot of your initial sales are going to come from advertising since it's going to take you a little bit of time to start gaining organic momentum. And then later on, you can uh, assume you'll have a higher... Um, uh, organic sales. So for example, you might assume in the beginning that your tacos, your total spend compared to sales might be 40, 50%. And over time, your goal is to reduce that ultimately getting somewhere in the 20% range uh, in terms of tacos. But in the beginning, a lot of, a lot of your sales are going to come from uh, Amazon advertising. And you need to make sure you have those budgets, but you really want to think about not so much of how much money do I need, but how much sales do I want to get? And what is my initial 
uh, a cost going to be. So let's take an assumption that you're going to pay a dollar cost per click, which is not that much. There's many categories and keywords that are going to be more than that, but let's just say a dollar cost per click and that you're going to have a conversion rate. Let's just make it, you know, um, round numbers, conversion rate of 10%. Okay. That means you're going to spend uh, $10 in order to get a sale, 10 clicks at a dollar, $10, you sell one unit, your product price is $15. And so you're going to have um, you know, an A cost of, uh, you know, uh, about 60, 70% or so, uh, initially, uh, it could be, it could be higher. So you want to work backwards and make assumptions on the numbers based on, uh, good educated guesses. You can also go into seller central, um, add the product, put in keywords, see what the, uh, estimated cost per click is and get a better understanding of where you're going to be, but don't assume you're going to have high conversion rates when you don't have reviews yet. So the whole game is really to one, differentiate your product as much as possible. So you're not just fighting for reviews um, and price and two, building up enough reviews until you become relevant. And depending on who your competitors are, that may be a hundred reviews, that may be a thousand reviews um, if you're you know, in a more competitive niche. Your best source of traffic when launching a product on Amazon is going to be Amazon internal, meaning there is no better shopper than the person who is searching for exactly what you're selling. So let's go back to that uh, baby floor mat. If you're selling a, a baby floor mat and somebody is searching for baby mat or floor mat for babies or for toddlers, and you have that product, that's gonna be a person, what I consider at the bottom of the funnel. So uh, a marketing funnel um, kind of looks like this, right? At the top, you have uh, a wide amount of, of people, um, but they're not as targeted as people at as they get towards the bottom of the funnel um, and they're closer to the sale. So somebody searching um, for that is going to be at the very bottom of the funnel. They're kind of ready to buy. They're searching for it on Amazon where they already have their credit card in. And there's only one reason why you search something on Amazon because you want to buy something or browse something or, or get an idea for something that you want to buy, unlike Google or you being on uh, Facebook or TikTok or Instagram. So Amazon... Um, Organic traffic, Amazon paid traffic is going to be your best source of sales. You could also work with uh, influencers. Um, you could build a, a community. Um, those things can work very well uh, also, but there's not going to be anything stronger than search traffic within Amazon. Um, building a community, I think, could be really good. Even ahead of your uh, launch, you can build a community. You can show your journey of, of uh, you know launching this uh, of, of kind of making this product even get suggestions for people. And if you're able to build that community, you could perhaps have people already waiting for the product that you're going to launch. Perhaps they even had a say in the uh, creation of the product. If you have that kind of community, that's the best place to, to launch because you have sort of like raving fans already for a product and you see many brands utilizing their communities uh, in terms of asking them what product they want to see next and getting feedback. If you don't have that, uh, influencers and working with influencers can work well, but there will be nothing stronger than somebody searching for a product already uh, in Amazon um, and then perhaps in, in Google, but Amazon ads are going to have a better conversion rate than uh, running ads on Google. Early on in the business, you should reinvest as much of your earnings, revenue, profits back into the business as much as possible. Um, in fact, Many sellers, including myself, when I started selling on Amazon, uh, started it as a side hustle while I still had income coming in from something else. And that's really the best way to start because uh, there's no um, pressure to have to take money out of the business and you can reinvest and reinvest and reinvest and you can grow um, really fast. Um, when you get to a point where um, you know, you've already proven that you have profitable products and you want to scale further, um, you may start to feel the cash flow crunch of um, selling products and then needing to place an order for Q4. Um, and you need to place a big order because you're expecting really big sales and you don't have the funds uh, yet available for that. And that's when, you know, those situations are, are when you really want to use uh, external funding to, uh, to grow the business. Uh, but early on in the business, I feel like you should um, continue to reinvest as much as you can, um, leave the money in the business uh, while you're growing. And then as you continue to grow the business, you can start paying yourself 
um, and increase the, the amount of salary that you're taking out of the business uh, more and more over time. But initially, I say uh, focus on scaling fast and re reinvesting as much as possible. Use funding where you're feeling the cash flow crunch and hopefully you have products that are growing and scaling. And uh, those are the ones that are going to need uh, funding because their sales are growing and to sustain that you need outside capital. Over the last couple of years, Amazon has been adding more and more data uh, and tools for sellers to use. So um, until a few years ago, Amazon didn't really give you a lot of data. They didn't really give you search volume data. They didn't give you uh, brand analytics data. Today, Amazon gives you a tremendous amount of data. So uh, today, Amazon has brand analytics, which shows you the um, search frequency uh, of, of keywords, how, how frequently they're searched compared to other ones. They show you the products that have the top three uh, in click share, um, and then they show you the conversion share um, of those products as well. Amazon also has a product opportunity explorer, which gives you tools to help you find um, new product opportunities, how many competitors there are that exist in the market. They give you the top search terms for those products. And if those search terms have been um, growing or not over the past 90 and 365 days. Um, and more recently, Amazon has uh, added uh, more tools that allow you to see your impression share um, and brand share on uh, particular um, keywords. And also now they're allowing you to see, um, put in any ASIN um, and see uh, information on brand share and impression share uh, in the market. So Amazon has been adding more and more tools. And uh, I think this is really great. And I, I think you can expect Amazon to add uh, more tools. One thing I would like Amazon to um, fully be able to show you is um lifetime value of your cust of your customers um, so that you can really understand how aggressive you can be um, around a product. Right now, they show you repeat purchase behavior, but you have to use uh, some third-party tools in order to fully understand the lifetime value of, uh, of, a, of a customer. Um, and then there's some great you know, third-party tools that are, um, that are out there, um, including um, kind of the, the big ones that you may know of, like Jungle Scout and Helium 10. There's another tool called Data Dive. Um, that we're using. Another one that we've recently started using is uh, Ecom Analytics. We're using Perpetua to help manage ad spend. So there's there's a tremendous amount of third-party tools in the uh, marketplace and tools that give you alerts. Another one we use is, is Sellerboard. Um, but at the same time, Amazon is giving you more and more um, data. Now, on the marketing front, Amazon has also launched uh, a lot of things. Um, uh, definitely, there's more ad placements um, which, you know, not necessarily great, but also presents an opportunity to get in front of customers. Um, but, you know, Amazon over the last few years has added uh, video ads. There's more video ad placements now. Um, recently, there have been more sponsored brand placements on the side of pages and on detail pages, um, as well as sponsored display ads. Um, Amazon just recently um, in a beta is allowing you to run sponsored brand video ads um, off Amazon, like in streaming channels through sponsored brands. Some of these features that are available through uh, DSP only, the demand side platform um, are now available in through um, sponsor brands and also in sponsor display. You can target um, audiences on, uh, off, on and off uh, Amazon, as well as doing things like uh, targeting, retargeting views, people who viewed your listing, as well as retargeting uh, past purchases. Uh, recently, Amazon has uh, now allowing brands to have a brand story and premium A+. Plus which gives you more uh, features, interactive features within your A+, including video. Um, and I predict that uh, Amazon Posts will uh, allow you to do video um, as well uh, at some point to post videos there. And at some point, there will probably be a promoted uh, post. So I think you're going to see um, the advertising continue to develop and more of the things that you can do in DSP will be brought on to uh, sponsor display. For example, in DSP, you can cross layer two different audiences and target, you know, somebody who matches two audiences. You can't do that in, in sponsor display, but I think more of these features that are in DSP are going to come onto um, the um, sponsor display uh, platform and the self-service platform. And uh, another, um, you know, big thing is the Amazon Marketing Cloud, which is helping you understand the full customer journey um, when uh, when you're utilizing DSP, especially with top of funnel 
uh, like OTT and online video advertising to understand the full customer uh, journey because attribution right now is just 14 days and it's a last click attribution. Uh, I think Amazon is going to add more data so that um, perhaps you'll be able to see attribution even further out, even if it may not count towards your um, you know, a cost numbers. One thing we've also seen Amazon add, and there's a data for it now, is the Creator Connect data, where you can connect directly with influencers within the Amazon uh, platform, with Amazon influencers, and you can pay them an additional commission. So, what does that mean, additional commission? It means that um, today there's Amazon influencers. Essentially, these are like affiliates, but they're creators. Um, and when they send traffic to Amazon, they get an affiliate commission that Amazon pays them. Amazon is going to give you the option to connect with influencers and pay them an additional commission above and beyond what Amazon is paying them. So you can add as little as 1% and up to sort of attract these influencers and work with them so that not only are they getting the affiliate, maybe it's 4% from Amazon, but now you've added another 6%. They're getting a total of 10% um, on the sale. I think that's going to continue to develop. And I think you'll also see uh, Amazon attribution continue to develop. Right now, Amazon attribution is in a beta and it doesn't... Um, work 100% of the time, I think Amazon will be working on that more and helping you um, or encouraging you to drive that outside traffic. We've seen them add the brand referral bonus. Um, I think that's going to continue to stay in place and Amazon's going to continue to put more uh, focus on um, the um, outside traffic and attribution. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Amazon Live ever, ever takes off. That's one thing that uh, I haven't really seen take off yet, but I think that's... Um, you know, something that over time we'll see if the American consumer adopts in, in Asia, live shopping is very big. And obviously we've had it in the U.S. market with, you know, QVC and a home shopping network, but it'll be interesting to see how that develops and if Amazon live shopping takes off. When it comes to selling uh, niche products versus more competitive products, there's pros and cons to, to both. Um, one of the benefits of selling a niche product is that you're generally going to have less competitors or maybe even um, no competitors. Um, however, the downside is that a niche product is going to have a, a smaller targeted audience. So basically with less competition comes less potential sales. With more competitive products, you have uh, a very big market. You have a lot of people that are searching for that product, for that solution. However, the competition is greater too. So the question is, should you go into a niche product? Should you go into a competitive product? Well, I think one first depends on the uh, level of capital that you have um, in the business. If you're starting out with $5,000, $10,000, $15,000, $20,000, you probably should go for a more niche product because I'd rather um, hit a single and generate a product that's generating some sales that becomes profitable than try to go for a home run, not have enough capital and you know uh, quit or lose all my money. So if you're starting with smaller capital or if you don't have as much experience, I would say start with a niche product that doesn't take uh, a ton of investment. You'll learn along the way too. You'll generate sales, you'll get profitable and hopefully you can then launch another product. And maybe that is a um, niche, but has a little bit more of an audience and you can kind of work up your cash flow so that you can um, also gain the confidence to be able to build up the capital and the confidence to go into a uh, more uh, competitive product. So which marketing tools should you have if you want to grow your sales uh, on Amazon? So for growing your sales on Amazon, I think you want to categorize uh, your marketing into two departments. You have your traffic department and you have your conversion department. So when you think about traffic, you want to have the tools to make sure you're doing keyword research, understanding Amazon SEO, the competition. Um, you want to be able to generate um, traffic. So you need a, a good main image so that people will click into your listing and you need tools for generating traffic, which you're going to do with Amazon advertising. You can do that manually, or you can use a paid tool. Uh, we use uh, Perpetua, but there's uh, a variety of paid tools in the uh, in the marketplace. So you want to think about your tools that are going to help you to generate traffic. Helium 10, Data Dive is another tool we use. Um, you want to track keywords as well, which you can do in, in Helium as well. We do it also with Ecom Analytics. Um, or use Jungle Scout, right? You want to use tools out there that will help you understand the SEO, the copy to make sure that you're able to generate traffic. And uh, also you want to run advertising, with, again, which you could do manually or you could do with tools. Um, the second component is conversion rate, right? So you're going to want to make sure that you have 
um, create images, um, A plus content, uh, perhaps video. So some of these things are not necessarily tools, but some of these things are either hi is hiring the right um, uh, creatives. Uh, something we do is we help people generally we help people with graphic design to create their images, to create their A plus content. Um, you can hire a great pro. Uh, videographer to create uh, a video for, for the product that's going to show all the features, benefit uh, of the product, showing the product in use uh, with, with lifestyle uh, images as well as video. So these are all aspects of the um, conversion side. And then you kind of have somewhere in the middle the, the operations of the business, right? So for example, we use a tool like Sellerboard that gives us the profitability and, and alerts. Um, Apefig offers you the ability to see your um, supply chain, your lines, right? And then also think about your cash flow and the finance side of the business. Um, tools like QuickBooks and A2X, right? The, these are the, the finance and operational tools that you want to have in your in, in the business. So you kind of have your your traffic tools, your conversion tools, and then you you want to have the things like your operations tools to, to manage things like inventory, finance. Um, and then if you are growing a team, then you're going to want to have, um, you know, a bunch of tools for um, managing the team, uh, we in our company we use Slack, we use ClickUp. These are more, you know, not just in e-commerce, but these are um, tools that uh, apply to kind of all all businesses that are growing um, and and building a, a team. And you know, there's there's other tools like uh, some people like Microsoft Teams um, or Asana. But you're going to want to have these operational and project management tools within the business as well. So, how do you prevent cart abandonment? Well, it's a million dollar question that a lot of people um you know that would want an easy answer to um let's talk about on, on amazon so on amazon there are things you could do to uh improve cart abandonment um things like having a, a coupon might be the thing that pushes someone to add the cart and then check out because they think the coupon might expire perhaps running deals um is going to give people uh a sense of uh of urgency um you know on the product um, and there's the, that's pretty much kind of what you have available to you with, with Amazon, because you cannot do an email to somebody who left a product in their cart. Right. So, um, and people on Amazon add products to cart, uh, as a sort of like reminder, I want to, I want to buy this product later. Right. It's kind of adding, instead of a wish list, they're kind of adding things that they might want to buy. And then they just kind of save it in their cart because they're still browsing or, you know, going through the process of, of, of shopping. Uh, for a bunch of things that they want to check out together. Now on D2C, you have more control with things like uh, cart abandonment. Obviously, um, you can um, have a cart abandonment email. If somebody abandoned their cart, you can offer them uh, a discount to come back, which many uh, D2C uh, stores will do if somebody abandons the, the cart. Um, you can have an excellent intent uh, pop-up. Um, and you can uh, continue to nurture that customer with, um, uh, you know, if they're uh, with emails, basically on, on your email list, you can also retarget them. Um, so you could put a pixel for anybody who added to cart, but they didn't check out and you can retarget them with ads with a particular um, targeted offer um, and remind them to, um, to check out or give them the reasons to check out. With Amazon, you're uh, a little bit more um, limited, but, you know, the better your product, the better your offer. Um, the more likely you are to minimize uh, that cart abandonment.